Hey, it's Dougie Wood, and in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how you can create your own SharePoint list from an Excel file. I'm also going to teach you how to create this and use the right columns for the data that you've got inside of your Excel spreadsheet. So let's jump in and take a look. So today I'm actually going to be showing you this via the SharePoint interface. Now that sounds a bit silly because you think, well, it's a video about SharePoint, but actually you can create SharePoint lists from the new Microsoft product, which has got a very imaginative name called lists. You can get to it by going to office.com and uh, clicking the app launcher in the top left hand corner. And then when you see the uh, applications appear, you should see that there's a lists um, app. Now that is just purely lists which are created inside of SharePoint on SharePoint sites, but it's taking out all the other noise of SharePoint. It's only focusing on the data that's in the SharePoint lists. So what we're going to do is we're going to be accessing this through the SharePoint interface itself because that's what most people still are doing. So I'm navigated to my SharePoint site. In this case, it's my hub site, but it could be any SharePoint site you wanted to store that list on. Then I'm going to click on the cog across the top right hand corner and click on site contents. Now this is going to take me to the back end of my SharePoint site in which I can see all of the existing SharePoint lists and libraries. The next thing I'm going to do is click on new and then click on list. Now this is where I can create my, um, my new SharePoint list. I can either create a blank list, meaning I can create it completely from scratch, giving it a new name, and then all the columns in individually one by one. I could create it from an existing list. So say, for example, you had a list of data that you wanted to recreate, essentially, um, but maybe you want to add new columns into this. So it's maybe it's something you've set up for one department, and you're then wanting to recreate that for multiple departments. You could then import from an Excel spreadsheet, which is what we're going to do in this video, or a CSV, which is very similar to just the file formatting, which is, is slightly different. But my first top tip of this is to also, just taking a, a break a second from thinking about creating our lists from Excel files, but also check this out. We've got loads of templates which Microsoft offer to us, completely free, and essentially this is a great place to start your learning journey about SharePoint lists. Because say, for example, if I was to click on the travel request template, I can see here there's different types of columns with different types of data inside of it. So you've got different things like date fields, choice fields, uh, currency fields. Um, and we can also apply things like conditional formatting to make it go green if it's yes or red if it's no and things like that. So it's a good place to learn by, by seeing previous examples. But anyway, I'm going to get back to creating this from my Excel spreadsheet now. I've already created my Excel spreadsheet and I'm basically got a list of cars. So let's just pretend that I'm a car dealership, for example. I just want to keep track of all the cars that I've actually got in my dealership. So instead of having an Excel spreadsheet, which is getting sent around and maybe duplicated and things like that, I want a single source of truth. I want my SharePoint list that's on my SharePoint site for my, my company to be able to see what cars we currently have in stock. So this is where I'm starting off an Excel spreadsheet, and then we're going to convert that into a SharePoint list. So let's go back a step and look at that creation wizard. From here, this is where we can then click on the From Excel option. Now it's going to say Upload a File. So I'm going to click on Upload File. I'm going to navigate to where my file is, which is this Cars file. And then I'm going to click on that to open it up. And now you can see it's already imported all of the data that's in my spreadsheet. And it's had a good go at trying to understand what the column types of my list is going to be. Now, you always need to have a title field. So this is going to say, um, what is the title of that item going to be? So I'm happy to, for that to be the manufacturer. So the manufacturer of the car. Then it's going to say, um, what are the, the column types of these? So for example, um, single line of text is just a single piece of text. Multiple lines of text could be, um, uh, let's say for example, a description or a slightly longer piece of text. A choice is a preset uh, set of, of choices. So um, actually I think that would be a really good option for 
um, the color. So that would preload. So say, for example, if I've got blue here multiple times, that will then become an option in the choices. So next time I come to add a new car to this, I can select um, a, a choice that's already in there. So we don't have to type in um, blue every time we do that. And then we've got um, a number field. So it knows that this is number. Or we could set it to be a currency. So we know that it's going to be a monetary value. And that's all I need to do. So once I've just made sure I've got the data there um, and I've got my columns um, with the correct column types, I can then click on next. And it's going to say, okay, well, what do you want to call this list? So um, this might be, say, my cars stock list, for example. And then the description might be a list of all of the cars that we have in stock, something along those lines. And then we can say whether we want to show it in the navigation, which is just going to appear across the top. Um, in this case, I'm just going to say, no, I don't necessarily want that. And then I'm going to click on create. So that's how I'm going to create me my list. And depending on how much data you have in your Excel spreadsheet, um, will depend on how long that takes to create. But you can see I don't have much data, so it's very quickly created that for me. Um, I can then build on this further. So let, let's say, for example, um, I wanted to add some additional columns onto this to sort of tag um what it is that that that, that these things are or um or let's say a date uh, in which we actually had that car arrive in our dealership. So let's say, for example, um, in the future, we might want to build on this further with some power automate to say, well, if we've had a car that's been sat in our dealership for over six months, maybe we need to review the price of it. Have we got it too expensive? So no one's actually buying it, for example. And then maybe we need to do a review of the price to lower it down and hopefully the car will sell. So these are the things we can then automate with this data afterwards. So let's add a new column. So you can see here are all the column options we've got in our SharePoint list. Not all of the options will have appeared previously because not all the data types are going to match what we're going to be putting in here. But as I say, we've got text, we've got choice options, we've got date and time, which I'm going to come back to in a second. The multiple lines of text. Person is a new one we've not seen. This is where you can tag um, a Microsoft 365 account against it. So maybe it's, for example, um, if this was more of like a, a sales sheet of cars, we could say who sold the car, for example. Um, we've got a number, so we can provide a number against it. So maybe it's sort of like a, a priority order of how quickly we need to sell these, for example. Or yes, no, is this car... Uh, does it have uh, what we call in the UK an MOT? So is it is it safe to drive? Yes or no? Um, we've then got things like hyperlink. Um, now, things like hyperlinks you wouldn't necessarily use, but maybe you might want to provide a hyperlink to the manufacturer's website, for example. So if you were getting any questions, if you were a car dealership about that particular car, you can then link directly to the website about that car. Uh, currency is what we use for the price. Location, maybe if you're a dealership which has got loads of different um, dealerships around the country, maybe you want to put a location where that car is. So let's say if I'm in the UK, I might say this is in my London dealership or it's in my Manchester dealership, for example. An image, so maybe we want to upload some pictures um, of the car so we can see what the actual car is and what it looks like and the condition. So again, if maybe we're getting an email question from a potential customer, um, we've got all the information about the car all in one place. Managed metadata is just more like additional kind of tags of so much deeper diving into this. So you don't necessarily see this all that often, but to give you like a real world example of where how managed metadata is used, think about like a clothing website where you're going on there and typically how you find clothing is you might say, well, I'm looking for men's clothing and I'm looking for a... Uh, shirt, for example, and I'm looking for it in a size which is extra large and it's uh, a, a red shirt. Now, these are all tags um, which drill down. So eventually, I've then got to my extra large men's shirts which are red. So that's taken a pot of products, which might be, say, 100,000 products, and then taken that down with those, those um, set of parameters to only 50 products, for example. And similar with managed metadata, you can do that in SharePoint. So you can have drill downs of detailed tags um, so that you, you've got that kind of chain of command of data. Or you've got lookup. Again, very rarely used, but that's looking up data in another SharePoint list. So let's say, for example, I did have a sales list 
um, of what cars I've sold, I might look up my stock list to pull in the data um, uh, of the car into the sale. So it's got a little bit of a, like a relationship there, but it, it it's quite simplistic. If you're looking for more of a relationship-driven database, SharePoint is not necessarily the, the best use case for that. It's good for like lightweight data holding, a little bit of a small relationship, but if it's heavy relationships you're looking for, then I would consider using something like Dataverse. So in this case, I'm just going to select date and time um, of when we received the car, for example. So um, we could just say date received. Oh, help if I spelt it right. And then description, um, the date of when we had the car arrive at the dealership. So date and time, so include time if we wanted to. Probably not, it's not really that relevant in this case. Friendly format is just, it would then say, um, rather than showing it as a sort of a, a date, it would sort of show to say that it arrived today or yesterday or it arrived five days ago, six days ago, something like that. But it's just showing it in an easy to understand rather than um, a, a sort of date format. And then we can say default value. So we might want to say today's date. So if we're creating the item, it automatically defaults to today's date. But it doesn't have to be that. You can override it. But typically when you're creating a form with a SharePoint list like this, you want to reduce the amount of manual steps. So if it's most likely that the car arrived on the date that you're creating this item, then you could default that value to today's date. Then we click on save. And now we've got a new column appeared. You can either individually edit items by selecting them, clicking on edit, and then you can see these fields that we can edit as a form, or we can put it back into almost like a spreadsheet mode by clicking on this edit in grid view option here, and then you can see we can specify a date and then drag that down and say maybe all these cars arrived today. Then we click on exit grid view, and that's automatically then tagged all of that data for me here. Now, that's our SharePoint list. We've got it created. Um, it's ready to go. Um, you might want to do additional things, add additional columns, change the view slightly. So maybe, let's say, for example, um, if we're interested in uh, grouping by the manufacturer, so then we can see we've got, for example, two Hondas, uh, two Toyotas, uh, only one BMW, um, and so forth. Um, and that's nice and easy um, to do. So we can mess around with that. We can group the, the views, we could filter by, we could sort them in different orders. So you can really sort of manipulate and show that data how you want it to be visible to you. I hope you found that video useful. If you did, please like and subscribe to the channel as I always ask that you do. But I've recently released a membership as well. Now the link for this will be in the description of this video, or you can go directly to my channel and click on the join button, which is next to the subscribe button. Now there's three layers of membership that's available. If you just wanna support me and the content that I'm putting out, as well as getting access to a priority replies membership Q&A area, then there is the share the love level membership, which is only 99p per month, which really helps me and supports the work that I'm doing in my own time to create this YouTube channel. I also offer some training courses. So these are premium training courses with the ability to also vote for new training courses, which are only accessible exclusively to members. You will also get bonus feature content as well as polls and questionnaires and activity of content inside of the, the, the channel area for members only. You can also choose to join the face-to-face -face membership, which is essentially a monthly drop-in where you'll be able to have the opportunity to join and ask questions along with other members of this channel. Um, you can submit your questions ahead of time to make sure that I've got a chance to review them, potentially put together any demos, things like that. Um, and also I'll be recording these drop-in sessions um, so that you can watch them afterwards if you, for example, need to follow up with them. Or if you can't make that particular month, you could submit your questions. I'll read them out anyway and we'll, you've got the recording there to view it afterwards. I should also mention, cool as well, uh, that with the share the love options, in fact, with all these options, I should mention, as, as you kind of move up the different membership levels, it automatically includes the previous 
um, membership options as well. But I'm also going to be getting some cool badges created, some emojis and things like that um, to help the community uh, feel more connected. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, as I say, check out the membership. Please like and subscribe the channel. And if you've got any questions at all, use the comments feed below. Thank you very much for watching.